Oh, this is one of my favorite videos to film. I only film this video twice a year because the Sephora savings event only happens twice a year. Today I'm doing my Sephora savings event recommendations for you guys and it's going to kick off a Sephora week. I know a lot of people get irritated that I only do Sephora for the week while the sale is going on but it's my favorite time of year as a Sephora lover and a makeup lover because you can get better deals. I'm gonna be honest, you can get better deals a lot of times on the brand's website, but there is something about being able to get a percentage off on whatever brand Sephora carries all at once. I really like their return policy. So for me, this is a video, this is a time that I do like to purchase my makeup favorites instead of having to source all of these sales from different places. If you watch my channel regularly, you would know I mostly review Sephora makeup and Sephora brands. So it only makes sense. It's only natural that I share with you my Sephora recommendations videos. This was a lot to narrow down. Every time this event happens, I always over pull too many products and then I have to scale it down. So we scaled it down to uh, 30. <laughs> but I just love this time of year because it's a great time for me to kind of narrow down my favorites, take a step back and see what have I really been wearing, what would I really recommend you to purchase if you were interested. Now the Sephora sale is interesting because like I said it actually isn't the best discount especially if you aren't rouge. So if you are looking for the best best value this maybe isn't the best time to shop. Always keep an eye out for brands because a lot of times they'll do sales and brands like Pat McGrath, they always have a sale that's bigger than 20%. So I really wouldn't recommend purchasing any Pat McGrath. This is the time to shop on brands that don't really have sales and I'll tell you which ones those are. So these are products that I've been loving heavily for the last six months since the last Sephora sale. There's a lot of staples that I would have put in here if I could have, but then they'd be in every single Sephora recommendations video and that would be really redundant. So I tried to not have too many repetition items, but there are some because they're just that good. So let's first get started because I have like talked your ear off. Every Sephora savings event, they usually have a few kits out like these. If you are interested in the majority of the products in any of these kits, pick them up. These are a fantastic deal. So this one, for example, is the Summer Showstoppers kit. This one is my favorite of the kits that's... The this one is my favorite of the kits that have come out. It's $52 prior to the discount. It has a $154 value, but with my 20% off since I'm Rouge, it's a lot less than, well, not a lot, but it's less than $50. But you get 10 things, four of which here are full size. And why this one stood out to me, if you are a traveler, these kits are great because you get a lot of like smaller travel size stuff, but I really like the Benefit Brow Setter. This full size House Labs lip oil is really, really great. I thought this uh, beauty blender looked interesting. Milk Makeup even put in one of my favorite colors of their cream blushes. This is one of my favorite super goop. It's like the glow screen primer slash has a little bit of SPF in there as well. I love using this for travel. And then of course there's a range of products here that I haven't tried either. So it's a great way to sample items without breaking the bake all at once. And if you are on a tight budget but you want to pick up something for the sale, this is a way to get a good number of items. And most of these items in here that from what I've tried are really nice. The only one that I'm not a fan of is this Sephora Size Up Mascara, which unfortunately is a full size. But everything else in here I'm pretty enthusiastic about. So I think that value-wise, this is great. But if you're looking at these and you're like the majority of these you're not interested in, then don't pick it up. But it's it's a good value. You can't deny that. Also, throughout today's video, you'll see me using these. These are a product that I recommend picking up in general. The Hourglass Double-Sided Brushes. They are so soft. They are cruelty-free. But you wouldn't be able to tell by how soft they are. The best shapes, whatever shape tickles your fancy, it's going to be worth it. They're extremely high quality, so I use these all today. 
these have been amongst my most used brushes in the last six months and I normally am not a double-sided brush fan but I've actually been enjoying the double-sided feature of having a couple different sizes here on one tool so these are 100% worth it and Hourglass does have 20% off sales occasionally but really never more than 20% off maybe sometimes 25 but Hourglass is a brand that's worthwhile of picking up because they don't have sales too frequently. The next product that I have is actually featured in the kit that I just showed you but with summer and spring coming up I think that this is a great product to add to your routine. It's a super goop glow screen. This I think is phenomenal. It adds the prettiest glow to the skin. It feels a little bit hydrating and it has some additional SPF for you to use. I love the way that this looks on the skin if you are into the glowy look, which you will see that I am. My base products today are very, very glowy. I think you will enjoy this. So this for me is just something that I want to re-up on, get a fresh one of because I do use this so frequently. This is actually what I'm constantly using as a makeup primer because I just love the way it sets my makeup up for success for glow. So this is a very hyped up product, but for me, this is still worth it and I think this is the best time to pick it up considering that spring and summer is coming and if you want that summer glowy skin, this is a phenomenal product. I have three base products. All of them are on the lighter coverage scale and a very glowy, healthy finish. So I am a full coverage person. I do like a soft matte finish. But for spring and summer, I definitely like to tone it down in the weight of how it feels on my skin when it gets a little bit warmer. And I do like a little bit of a glow, but I feel like you can easily manipulate these with powders to get whatever finish that you want. But the first one that I'm recommending is more foundation-y. It's the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow by Undetectable Booster Foundation. Oh my gosh, it has such a long name, but this is a beautiful foundation to give you glass skin if you don't set it. If you set it, it will set down more of like a matte foundation, but you have that option. But if you go very light with powder, this is the closest thing to glass skin that I found that a foundation can give. I think Makeup Forever did a phenomenal job with this formulation and it truthfully has been a foundation since it launched that I haven't been able to put down, hence making it a definite recommendation for this video. I like it better than the original. Though you guys did tell me the original was more flattering on my skin, but that's just because it does have less glow. But I want the glow. I'm okay with a little bit of pore showing. So if you're looking for a good glass-like foundation that also is going to give a little bit of coverage, I want to say like more so medium, this is a great way to go. It's one of the newer products that is on my must-haves list. So I have mine in the shade 1N14. Highly recommend this just based on the sheer number of times that I've been wearing this. Now these next two products, there hasn't been a video where if I could feature it that I wouldn't. Because you've seen me talk about these two all of the time. But I do want to give you that reminder that this is a good time to pick these up. And both of these brands don't have sales too often. Oh, oh. And I just think with summer and spring coming up. These are perfect for that type of temperature and weather. So the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint and the Danessa Myricks Yummy Serum Skin Tint. So both of these are kind of one in the same. They work the same, they look the same, they perform the same, they wear the same, all of that. So I can't really recommend one over the other. I just feel like I'm betraying one if I recommend one over the other. But just know these both give light coverage. They give a pretty healthy glow to the skin, a nice hydration. Very nice wear time. They'll break down gracefully, so you're not going to look like poo-poo at the end of the day. If you can't decide, I feel like the Hourglass might give like the tiniest, littlest bit more coverage. I prefer the Hourglass, like the itty-bittiest, tiniest bit more. But the Danessa Merricks is a little bit cheaper. So make your decision based on that. But if you're looking for the hottest, best skin tint to wear this spring and summer, Pick one of these two, you won't regret it. They're phenomenal, the best on the market. Twenty twenty three was a year of concealers, so I have three to recommend to you, but there is one that launched this year 
that's really beautiful if you are looking for something that's very long wear. This is the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Concealer. If you are somebody that is oily and just needs something a little bit more dry, I think you will really enjoy this. Now this is one where I say, you know, when I wear this with like a normal powder, the wear on is on it isn't like groundbreaking, but when I wear this with my favorite powders, like the Huda Beauty, the Givenchy, which you'll see me talking about in this video, my under eyes are flawless all day when I wear this. So for longevity reasons, that is why I'm mentioning this concealer because when I want my concealer to be real flawless all night, pair this with my favorite powder and it's the only concealer that really defies the <laughs> wrinkles and fine lines on my under eyes and just doesn't crease into them. There's no concealer that can do that except for this one. So with a phenomenal powder, this is a phenomenal concealer. So for something a little bit more dry, but not drying on the under eyes, but more dry because it's going to last longer, this is your gal. Everybody hyped up the foundation version of this so much, but I'm over here like, hello, how are we not talking about the concealer? And then I have like three classic concealers that I've been loving. All of them are actually on the more hydrating front. So this is a must have in my opinion from Tower 28, the serum concealer. It's hydrating, it lasts a long time, it looks juicy and it's versatile because I like to wear this as under eye concealer but also it looks so beautiful on the face. Even though it's hydrating, it has a very nice wear time as well and it surprisingly gives a good amount of coverage. This is one of like the top two concealers of 2023 to have launched and it will continue to be an all-time favorite because of how hydrating but full coverage it can be. Normally those things don't work in tandem but I actually have two more that also like the only two on the market it feels like that also can do that but yeah for me as somebody with drier skin I've been enjoying a hydrating but still long wearing concealer. This is one of the best and for me of the ones I'm looking at this is the concealer to me that's more versatile because I actually really love the way that it sits on the whole face if need be. I'm just thinking if you watch my videos regularly none of this should come as a surprise to you. Now you have to have to if you've had your eye on it maybe check out the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. Now I really love this concealer. It gives great coverage. It's very hydrating. It's quite similar to the Tower 28, but I'd say this one is a little bit more coverage, a little bit more perfecting. And for the main reason that I don't think I've had a single comment, and if there has been, I, I think it was a hater, but I don't think I've heard of anybody who doesn't like this concealer and I'm talking all skin types all age ranges everybody seems to love this concealer so I think this is a pretty foolproof safe concealer to purchase if you're on the market I mean mature skin talks about how beautifully this goes over fine lines it's hydrating but it still has great longevity it also has great coverage so it's really going to cover those under eye dark circles if you do have some darkness in that area for the most part I think when it comes to concealers, there's a lot of room for it to go wrong. Concealer is one of those things where it's very particular to the person. This, just based on my comment section alone, seems to be the most loved by a broad range of people. So I think there's a good chance you're probably going to love this if you pick it up. Just saying. And then the last concealer, this one's more personal to me, but I can see... Uh, some people not liking it, but I also really do like this Colfi Main Match Concealer. This is also a really mind-blowing to me hydrating but still full coverage concealer. This one is less milky than the other ones that I've mentioned. It, it's a little bit more tacky to spread out, but it still isn't difficult. But that's just how I can differentiate the formulas to you. But this one also wears really well has great coverage, has great hydration. It's one of those things where, you know, I can't say too much of what's different compared to the others. It's similar, it acts the same, but I love it just as much. So I feel like it would be left out if I didn't mention this one as well. So this one is a great option, depending on what brands, you know, you might want to support. I have a couple of powders, both of which perform very similarly, and I've talked about them so much on my channel. They are just a constant reference point. The first one is the Givenchy Prisme Libre 
Lieber, pardon my French, uh, powder. I have mine in the shade Rose. I think it's beautiful. It's one of the most blurring powders. The other one I want to talk about is the Huda Beauty powder, which I wasn't going to put in this video because I talk about it so much, but I just saw that she launched a fragrance-free version. So I'm more so calling out the fragrance-free version if you've been off-put by the fragrance of the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. This is also like the best powder that I've ever used. It just deletes the pores on your face. It's incredible and also when I use this with any concealer, it will instantly make that concealer last longer. And I'm, I mean the same too when I'm talking about the Givenchy, same meanings. They do the same thing. The difference between these two is if you have drier skin, I do think the Givenchy is a little bit more flattering. Huda Beauty can be quite matte, especially on those of you with dry skin. So just keep that in mind. That's like the only difference that I noticed. They're both equally as lightweight, but still blurring. And I wanted to give a special shout out to the Huda Beauty because they did launch a fragrance free version. And I know that was a huge reason many of you guys didn't purchase this powder. And now there's no longer that, but I will say it is quite fragrance, but I like the fragrance, but that's just me. But I'm so happy that more people can enjoy this powder, those of you who are sensitive to fragrance. So those are like the only powders you need in your life. And if you're looking for pressed, Pat McGrath has the best pressed. These guys are such a good pickup. Now they're not going to be for everybody, but I did want to shout these out because they are like $80, I believe. They're very, very pricey. Makeup Forever doesn't have many sales. This is a good opportunity to pick these up if you were interested. So these are the Makeup Forever HD Skin Palettes. They have a few different varieties. So I have one that has like a whole face. Color correction, contour, blush. And then I also have one that's kind of just different depths of skin tones that you can use to contour, highlight, shape, sculpt. That kind of thing. These things come in handy. Sometimes you just need a specific shade of a cream. These are so handy. I literally leave these out on my desk 24-7 to grab for when I need. It's been a long, long time, but I did a full tutorial using these on a short form video because they're so versatile. They're very nice formula. If I was still an active working makeup artist, these are definitely a product that I would have had in my kit because of how versatile they are. You can mix shades, you can do all types of things. You can wear these as foundations, bronzers, blush, concealer, whatever you want. Like these are a saving grace in a lot of situations. So this isn't gonna be for everybody, but if you've had your eyes on these, I wanted to give these a call out because this is a good time to pick them up. Okay, we're gonna get into cheeks. Cheeks was hard because so many cheek products have launched. I've, I've fallen onto the bandwagon. I really have. I am full on on the bronzer, on the blush, on the creams. I've always enjoyed cream bronzer and cream blush, but never to this level. So I have two cream bronzers that I recommend. I prefer a cream bronzer in a stick form. That's been what I've been into. This one is a longtime favorite of mine since it launched the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. The shade light medium on my skin tone is perfection. This is the perfect like bronzer shade, but leaning a little bit more on the neutral side. I know people say like gray is a better contour, but that's more for like print, stage makeup. When it comes to real life, you do not want to have gray on your face, but this is the perfect shade to give that in real life shadow. Now, this is not as creamy of a formula that I normally prefer for a cream bronzer, but it, the tone is so perfect that I overlook that, and the application is beautiful with this in terms of how long it stays, how it doesn't ever look patchy. So this is one of my favorite go-to cream bronzers here. Now if you're looking for something a little bit more warm and toasty for the summer months, you cannot go wrong with nude sticks. I use the shade Bondi Bay. This is one that I always find myself going back to. This over the years has been in many many recommendations because it's just a classic formula. 
Now, so many cream bronzers and cream blushes have launched. There's definitely a lot more competition for nude sticks, but I find that it's a formula that I keep going back to even after all of these years. So that's why I think they deserve a call out because a lot of times with somebody who has a collection of my size, who literally tests the new and the now for a job, it's very easy for a product to kind of get lost in translation, you know, just can't forget about it on to the new on to the next but dude sticks is one of those brands that i will always go back to so if you're looking for a good cream bronzer hit up nude sticks bondi bay is a little bit more warm than the makeup by mario doesn't bother me same thing goes with their nudies matte blushes or any of their stick blush formulas they have different finishes and stuff they're all phenomenal just a really solid formulation not going to mess up anything underneath you can apply with a sponge with a brush with your fingers it's that easy to blend these are less glowy this particular one less glowy than what is trendy right now but these will last you a lot longer especially if you have more of an oily skin type they do have a glowier option which is also quite beautiful but i find with the nude sticks they aren't like the creamiest wet to the touch malleable formulation but that also makes them last longer which is better if you struggle with longevity so keep that in mind now one that i've been having a lot of fun with i don't know how much it deserves a place in this video because it can be a little bit finicky but when i wear this i just love the juiciness so much is the say do blushes today it acted a little bit funny because i did set my under eyes before this has the potential to act a little silly willy with powder so you might see that in the demo and that's something to keep in mind it's not like a foolproof formulation for the most part i'm only grabbing for these dew blushes on days that i'm wearing very minimal even none at all powder that's when these look the best i love these with no makeup makeup looks or light makeup days to add a really youthful plump look to the cheek i think what makes these special is how dewy they are which there is a limit to do for me i've never been super into super dew but I think when I am wearing a makeup look that's not super glassy, more of like a soft matte, more natural finish, I kind of like these on the cheek to add that glow without any highlights. It almost looks wet, but in a way that doesn't bother me. So I just think the finish of these as a liquid blush altogether is very different than what I have in the rest of my collection which has made me have a really good time with these so i do recommend these but i don't recommend these for like super full coverage powdery days because then these won't perform to their highest potential so they can be a little bit finicky but for the specific look i think these are unique and they're worth they're worth the pickup now i've been in love with this formula for a long long time and new shades were recently added and the new shades have brought a newfound love for this formula once again to bring it back around because the new shades are so beautiful. So just in general, you don't need any of the new shades. But I highly recommend the Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush Duos. These are a phenomenal formulation. You also have the option to just use these as a cream blush alone or a powder blush alone. They have gorgeous packaging. Even the cream doesn't get funky with powder. I know he recommends to do powder first, cream on top. You can do that. It's not my preferred way. But I like having the option of going just powder, just cream, or layering how I desire. And they truly are a luxurious formula. Now, the sh new shades that launch, not too much, is like the perfect everyday go with anything shade. Just enough. I'm normally not a fan of baby pinks like this on me. I try. I definitely try to make them work. I wear them a lot. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they're not always very flattering on me. This is one that is. It's beautiful. It's on the side of my cheek. And then the other one, she's the moment, will be the moment for a summer blush color. It's this corally shade. And I can be a little bit wary of coral sometimes. This is a good one. I just feel like the three shades that he launched... Are true perfection on my skin tone at least and so they're so good that it reinvigorated my love for this product in general that I had to share it with you so you can pick up any color you're gonna love these these three new colors though wow okay I have some cheek products to finish up complexion I didn't think that these were gonna make their way into this video but 
I just love the way they look so much. These are the Dior Forever Glow Maximizers. These are actually a liquid highlight and it's funny because as a liquid highlight alone, I'm not as impressed with these. But these shades in particular, if you're around my skin tone, is what I'm recommending. Rosy and pink. I love to use rosy as a blush. And then mix just a little bit of pink along the top to kind of work as a highlight. But this gives that blush lighter kind of look. And these colors give Sabrina Carpenter. Obsessed with her makeup, obsessed with her glowy rosy cheeks. This gives that vibe. These are a really luxurious product. But I wanted to recommend these because Dior does not have sales. So Dior is one of those brands where it's like if you've been wanting something from Dior... Now is the time to get it. And in terms of Dior, these have been something that I have not been able to put down. And it's just funny because in my original review, I was like, these are fine as liquid highlighters. Like, they're very good quality. They don't mess around with powder or anything. But the glow just wasn't to my preference. And then I started using these two together. Wowzers. Wow, wow, wow. Worth every penny, in my opinion, for the look that I get with them. Okay, we're moving on to eyes. Minimal. Gone are the days of having a lot of eye products and palettes to recommend. I have two brow gels and I think today I use them side by side and I've decided which one was better. But you can't go wrong with either. ABH Brow Freeze Gel. This one is the stronger hold of the two, I would say, and it has that three part applicator that I really like. Longer bristles, shorter bliss bristles, and then a flat side to push it all down. This will freeze your brows in place. The other one is the Rare Beauty Brow Gel. Now this one is a little bit different. It has a normal spoolie applicator, but I think I like this one better. I think I do. I think with the ABH, it flattens the brows a bit much. So the Rare Beauty is nice because you don't need to flatten the brows, but it still gives a really good hold. That being said, both products are to my preference. I have brows that don't like a lot of brow gels they just won't go in the direction that i want them to go these are two that put them in the place so before filming this i really couldn't tell you which one's my favorite after filming this and doing one on each brow rare beauty brow gel is my favorite it's my most recommended brow gel of the moment but the abh one is also phenomenal okay eyeshadow palettes I only have one to recommend. They do have sales, but not as often. And these I don't think have gone on sale yet anyways. They're luxury, but luxury is a good time to purchase, if you know what I mean. <sighs> these YSL Couture Mini Clutches. These are such a good pickup from Sephora. I don't think the formula is for everybody, but these give more of a wash. They do have good pigment, but they have like a washed kind of blend. They really blend themselves. So I recommend the taupey one. This is the one that I'm wearing now, but that's just to my preference of tone here. It has a really pretty fine shimmer shade here, and then super buttery, easy to use, easy to work with mattes. And then the other one is the rose one. I think that this one is just so pretty on the eye. This one has two glimmery, shimmery shades. These give that effortless look that is so trendy right now in the eyeshadow game because I'm telling you the trends. It's just a trend. Do what you want. I don't want to say eyeshadow is out, but intricate eyeshadow looks is out. Eyeshadow is no longer the main part of makeup. It's about giving, getting a nice complexion. But in terms of eye makeup, a simple, effortless eyeshadow look, so chic right now. So these will give that. They're a very luxurious experience. How beautiful is this packaging? It's like a little YSL bag. Not only that, but they are so easy to apply. You can do this with your eyes closed. That's how easy they blend. So I highly recommend those and definitely to take advantage of getting any sort of discount on those because they are pricier. But in my opinion, they perform like a luxury eyeshadow. And I like the way luxury eyeshadow is applied. And then eyeshadow sticks have been game changers for me in the last year or so. And I've just been on the mission to find the perfect eyeshadow stick. And lo and behold, it's the classic. One of the first of its kind eyeshadow sticks. Laura Mercier Caviar Eye Color Sticks have been around since the beginning of eyeshadow sticks. But they really do have the best formula. They're easy to use. They last a long time. In terms of my favorite color, Intense Moonlight on the eyelid will give you a little bit of glimmery, shimmery. That's kind of what I like. 
but I like these because they don't make the eyelid look dry. Sometimes I'll have some eyeshadow sticks where, you know, they swatch smooth, they feel really nice, but then they kind of look dry on the eyelids. These don't. They blend out great. Good longevity. Good classic eyeshadow stick formulation. And again, really great for that chic, effortless, blended, one and done, two and done eyeshadow look. I have one eyeliner formulation from Lancome. So Lancome, you know, is a pricier brand. So it's a good time to pick up an eyeliner pencil, which is not really popular. Sometimes I just like to use eyeshadow. But I recently tried this formula. And this is like the longest lasting eye pencil I've ever used. So I'm talking tight line waterline too. Longevity here. This is the Lancome Lay Stylo Waterproof Eyeliner. Kind of boring, but just the performance is so nice. So what I like about this is you have a lot of time to smudge it out for that effortless blown out look. But once it sets, it sets and it's not going anywhere. So the blendability is great, but it's not too blendable to where you're applying it and it's slipping and sliding everywhere. You still can get a more defined line with this, but if you choose to blend it out, there's a sponge at the end, which will make it so easy, and then it sets. And then also, you can put this in the tight line in the water line, and it's not going anywhere. So, if you need a pencil eyeliner, this is the one that like has knocked the socks right off of my feet. I also think Charlotte Tilbury is a good time to purchase. Now she's just ever so recently started doing some sales on her site, but generally speaking, it's very far and few between. So if you can get a discount at Charlotte Tilbury, it's a great deal. So her favorite products of mine are her lip products, particularly lip liner and lipsticks. So what I recommend are her lip cheats. I mean, go Iconic Nude, go Pillow Talk. Those are classic shades. But from her new line, if you're interested in the new, Icon Baby is a gray everyday light pink. It's what I have on my lips at the moment. And then 90s Pink for something a little bit more bold but still wearable. Nonetheless, any of these colors are amazing. Like I said, Pillow Talk and Iconic Nude you cannot go wrong with. I also like Pillow Talk Medium for an everyday lip color. These are long lasting, they're creamy to apply, and they like they just don't budge. And she has the best color range as well in my opinion. So had to recommend these. Same thing with Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, in particular the kissing formulation. My favorite nudes are Nude Kate and Hepburn Honey. But if we want to talk new collection here, I recommend Candy Chic. It's like a pastel pink that's still wearable. One of the most unique pinks in my collection. This one I highly recommend because it's such a unique color. But it's that beautiful kissing formulation from Charlotte Tilbury where it's hydrating. It has a little bit of glow. Lasts a long time. My favorite number one lipstick formulation, by the way. Also, 90s pink. A little bit more mauve. It's similar to Rose to Fame. So I wouldn't recommend picking up Rose to Fame and 90s Pink. Rose to Fame is a little deeper, but pick up one of the two if you are into a mobbier, kind of more purple lip, but not super purple, still really wearable. But these give a little bit more like 90s depth to the lips. So I pulled a few shades for you to show today, but just in general, the lip liner formulation and the kissing formulation from Charlotte Tilbury are favorites of mine like for the last five years literally so these are five year favorites i was excited to put these in this video since she did just launch that newish collection and then all of my lip items are like hydrating formulas it's what i'm into right now i think one of the best summer and spring lip formulas is going to be the tower 28 juice balms now these are a tinted lip balm but they have quite a lot of tint and decent longevity especially when you get into the darker shade like squeeze this one will last you a lot longer these are so nice and hydrating and they have a little bit of juice to them a little bit of a gleam and glow to them I think these are just going to be a great product to throw on for the summer for the beach it's going to keep your lips really hydrated and surprisingly a good amount of color I just know that this is a formula coming forth in these next few months that I will be reaching for a lot. So I wanted to mention these as a seasonal recommendation. Now if there's one thing for the lips that I'm obsessed with is it's a plumping gloss slash oil. I love hydration. 
and I love when they can smooth over the lines of the lips. All three of these formulas can. So listen, open up those ears wide open. Not enough people, in my opinion, and these are so popular, but it still is not enough people to satisfy me. Talk about the Lawless Forget the Filler Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. Literally, as the name is, is what they do. These are thick gloss to the lips. They have a lot of reflection and they smooth right over the lines. One thing that I think about that is great with this product is that it is literally meant to smooth the lines on the lips. If you can smooth the lines on the lips, your lips are going to look so much more plump and these do just that. If you want something more sheer, I have Rosy Outlook. This I think was the first color that they did, just to give a little bit of glow. You don't have to have on anything underneath. You don't need a lip liner. I also demoed Cherry Vanilla because this one has a tint. Due to the popularity of this product, they've expanded their color range. So there's a lot of options now. Any color that you can get your hands on, love that. And it lasts a long time. This is like a repetitive favorite where I couldn't not feature it, but I've talked about it a lot. Mm, if we're talking, oh my gosh, did you see this? <laughs> if we're talking lip oils, this is my number one favorite lip oil. Number one. I always talk about it, the Clarins Lip Oil. Nothing smooths my lines on my lips more than this. Nothing reflects a little bit of light like this. This is the ultimate juicy lip oil for me. I'd recommend going for a deeper color. These do run sheer, but they will give that perfect tint to make the lips look just a little bit bigger. There's nothing more that I can say other than this is my number one favorite lip oil and there's a lot of good lip oils on the market. A lot that I like. But this is, this is the one. She's at the top of the pyramid. And then lastly, I have another gloss and this is more so like a temporary favorite. It's been in my collection for a while, but I recently rediscovered this and it's so good. This is from Patrick Ta, it's the Major Volume Plumping Gloss. My favorite shade is 2cc's. He did just launch the Rich formulation where it has more pigment and those are great. But I find that the sheer colors, they just look a little bit more plump. So 2cc's is my favorite. So one thing that I love about this that makes it stand out from other glosses because gosh, how many glosses are there? The smell. It's a really unique smell. It smells like a little spicy but sweet. It smells like it's gonna plump your lips too. Okay, I like the nice applicator has a nice angle and I just think it makes the lips look really really hydrated it's not a sticky formulation but you can feel that it's going to last a long time on the lips and it has a little bit of the plump tingling I like that little bit of spiciness on the lips if you are sensitive to spiciness this one is not bad at all I mean I probably still wouldn't recommend it if you don't like a plumping sensation on the lips but if you're wary, this is by far not the spiciest plumping lip gloss that I've ever tried. It is very light, very faint, but just enough to make me feel like, mm, I feel like doing something. So overall, like this is a rediscovered love in my collection, more of a recent fave, but Patrick Ta is a good brand to pick up. He doesn't really have sales. So this is another item that I think you should look for. This was an overlooked product, even on my front, but it's so good. <sighs> and we did it, you guys. It is with hesitation that I share with you my 30 Sephora recommendations. Now, I have more recommendations. You better believe it, okay? There's just some I didn't want to be too repetitive about. We're beginning a week full of Sephora videos, so there will be many more recommendations to come, but this is the official spring 2024 Sephora recommendations video that I have for you. I want you to think. Are you thinking? Hmm? Okay, start thinking about this. I want you to think about if there was one product, put yourself in my shoes, one product that you had to recommend to anybody who asked to pick up during the Sephora sale, what would it be? I don't even know what my number one would be. I'm gonna go with the Givenchy powder. Never goes on sale and is one of the best, most pore erasing products ever. That's my number one. 
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this Sephora recommendations and found it helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel because I do have more Sephora sale content coming up. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.